Hello everyone. I would like to talk about a practical control problem to help you visualize the control videos at my YouTube channel. This experimental platform is called an inverted pendulum. Let's first understand this system. Basically, we could be able to measure the angle theta shown as yellow through an encoder inside the box of this system at the bottom and the angle alpha shown as yellow through another encoder shown with light blue arrow. These should be regarded as the outputs of this system. In addition, we have one control input, which is the control torque, as shown as red. Using Newton's second law, or the Euler Lagrange method, or any other dynamical system method, I, I am not going to dive into details, so uh, this is not a uh, video about dynamical modeling. I can make a video if you wish. So using one of these two methods or in other method, you can find the dynamics of this system in nonlinear form, not in linear form. So if you want to use linear control techniques, you first need to determine the equilibrium point that you want to control this system. In this video, this equilibrium point, uh, this equilibrium point is the upward pendulum's equilibrium point. This is why the video is called as the inverted pendulum experiment. Then, at this equilibrium point, you need to linearize the system to find x dot equals to ax plus bu, y equals to cx, the state space. Uh, observe that uh, here the C matrix captures the outputs theta and ang uh, alpha angles. Uh, the, one, the, matrix, the C matrix is the one shown with ones and zeros with respect to the defined x. Right, we need to define x1, x2, x3, and x4 to find the uh, state space model of this system and then linearize it. The structure of 4x4a matrix and 4x1b matrix, b matrix is 4x1 because you only have uh, one control input. These, this structure of a, a and b will come from linearization at our uh, determined equilibrium point of interest, upward position. Now, looking at this similar diagram, the yellow box on the left feeds us the encoder's measurements, theta and alpha signals. The yellow box on the right is the control signal, control torque, to be sent to the motor as the motor voltage. As a control engineer, we then have the red box on the center that takes output measurements as well as the desired comment coming from green box on the top I'm going to describe in a second how we are going to use this command, which state to follow that command. So basically, um, the red box takes output and a desired comment um, uh, coming, coming to it and implements a control algorithm to generate the control signal to be sent to the motor. So let's look at closely inside the first red box. When the full state vector composed of theta alpha, theta dot and alpha dot, right, these were the states that construct a small x of t, when theta alpha, theta dot, alpha dot are not measurable at the same time, in this case only we can measure theta and alpha, one needs to implement in this case output feedback control approach because your uh, full state feedback uh, for full state vector is not available so, right we don't have theta dot and alpha dot so full state is not measurable that characterizes our linear system linearized system so we need to go with an output feedback control uh, strategy i described this uh, at my youtube channel Yet, I would like to mention that in this particular ex experiment, theta and alpha signals that we measure do not come with a lot of measurement noise. Hence, we use here the blue transfer functions 50s divided by s plus 50, which calcul calculates a filtered derivative of theta and alpha. So we have an approximated theta dot and alpha dot so that we can convert an output feedback problem to a state feedback problem we can again we can do this in this video since we don't have excessive measurement noise now if you look at the first four entries of this max that uh, the output of this max correct forms the capital x vector 
The first uh, and four entries is the actual state of this sh system shown earlier in this video that has theta, alpha, theta dot and alpha dot or filtered theta dot and filtered alpha dot. Here, the last uh, entry to the max, it is added and it is the integrator state z dot equals to theta minus the comment or z equals to the integral of theta minus c. Here we have the last, uh, we have only one integrator because we only want theta to follow the comment where we want to keep alpha always at zero, the angle of the inverted pendulum. So um, that's our control objective. We only want theta to follow the command and alpha to remain at zero. So that's why we only have uh, one integrator. Um, as you see, we are doing an integral approach uh, based control method now uh, with in, a, in, the, in the state feedback form. Now, we have to come up with the matrix K, the feedback gain matrix that multiplies five by one capital X aggregated x, which contains the actual um, system state vector little x and the integrator state z. And to this end, in this video, I use optimal linear quadratic control method. Check, for example, these two videos. The first one is on uh, linear quadratic theory and the second one is a nice MATLAB example that I tune uh, this method. This is it. We measure theta and alpha through encoder, then build our control al algorithm, in this case, the integral approach in state feedback form. Since we avoid an output feedback design by, by approximating the missing state vector entries through filtered derivatives, and then apply the generated control signal to the motor by using the gain matrix K that multiplies this uh, capital X vector. Finally, for fun, uh, you can do some robustness tests with your pen, with my highlighter in this case. As you see, when you perturb the pendulum, it turns back to its original position and this ends the video. If you have any questions about this experimental video, let me know. I just wanted to, you know, uh, explain using this experimental setup, how you, when you have a nonlinear model, you know, you, why you need to linearize because I have a linearization method, on, method video on my channel and how you form the linear uh, model with respect to an equilibrium point that you want to control the system. And then you can use honestly feedback feed forward approach. I prefer to use here integral approach. It has more robustness to disturbances. And when your state vectors are not available um, you need to use an output feedback approach here. I approximate uh, output feedback approach by state feedback by calculating filtered derivatives once again because the measurements that recede from the encoder does not have much uh, measurement noise.